Folks, you know how we do. I mean, it's season five. I told you guys I was bringing the heavy hitters all throughout the state of Maryland, Baltimore, and I'm beyond. And this guy I've coming on, he's doing some big things. I've been trying to get him to show. It's been my fault because I've just been so, so busy. <laughs> but we're going to, and the next voice you hear will be one of the best guys. He's doing so much work. I mean, if you want your stuff tailored, done, suits made, everything, this guy's doing it big time. Mr. Aaron's his voice, you'll hear his voice next. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. Are you or someone you love in need of mental health support? For All Seasons is now offering same-day therapy appointments with no wait list. Through the For All Seasons open access program, you can walk in for mental health services and begin therapy in the same visit. For All Seasons accepts all insurances and provides financial assistance if you need it. For therapy, psychiatry, or victim support, we have appointments available today. Call For All Seasons, 410-822-1018. Welcome to the No Picks After Dark podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Dante. I told you guys we got some heavy hitters this season. Season five coming ready right at you. This episode, I'm so excited to talk to this guy because I think everybody, my whole theme of this year was to dress the part, look good, look sexy, making sure you, you when you're in the room, you're in the room. And I have one of the best tailors all around, I would say the state of Maryland, okay? Every time I look up, he's doing stuff with celebrities. <laughs> I can't remember how many celebrities he's working with, but he's doing it, and he's from home, he's from Baltimore doing it. Mr. Aaron, how are you doing today? Oh, man, I'm wonderful, man. Thanks for having me, man. Tell the tell people about, name your company. So, my uh, my shop is called The Bushlers of Baltimore. Um, essentially, we are the, you know, we're your, your neighborhood-friendly tailor, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we kind of do it with a different, an unorthodox ox approach. Right, so we're not the traditional tailor. Um, the the actual proper term for a tailor is the man who cuts the cloth, mm -hmm. right? So, essentially, like we don't make anything from scratch like we used to, like I used to back in the day. We wanted to focus on making the things that you have better, right? Okay. So um, we master uh, alterations. That's how we started, right? But slowly but surely, like we're actually drifting into custom and made to measure, right? Um, and during the process, I realized like. You know, people all shapes and sizes, yo. Mm. And people are very, very insecure about their bodies. They really don't know what to do. And it's a very daunting process. Like, when it's time to get dressed, don't know where to shop, don't have enough money. So we want to provide a niche or a, sp a space for people to come and be who they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I consider myself a physician. I love it. Saying? I like, I like, like that. You come in with your ailment and you tell me. You tell me what's wrong, and I'm gonna give you a prescription. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that. And it's and it's all it's all a love. It's a love practice. You know, like it's a love business. It's not built on, um, you know, like obviously enterprising in the future, right? But um, right now, we just want to make sure that you know we're focusing on really, really paying attention to the people. You know. Okay, so um, so I guess let's give people a little background. Are you from the area? Are you originally from Baltimore? Yeah. Area? Okay. So originally, I'm from West Baltimore. Okay. Um, born and raised West Baltimore. <laughs> That's almost. I was about to get a fresh prince. <laughs> uh, born and raised in West Baltimore. Uh, my great grandparents came here and settled um, the Great Migration, mm. um, and he settled in on, on Westwood Avenue, and then we lived. My mother and my mother, my grand, my grandfather, my father's father. They lived around the corner. So mm -hmm. just growing up, West Baltimore, one down the street, different grandparents' house, like moms across the street. Like our family was in a bubble. I like that. Um, and then just over the years, man, like my mother really, you know, she separated my dad and she had a hard time really like sitting still. So like that really taught me just how to make new friends on the fly, like how to be social. You know what I'm saying? Like I lived in every corner of Baltimore City. Wow. East Baltimore, West Baltimore, um, Owings Mills, like... 
you name it, you know. So I've got friends all over the city, which is great. Um, but also in the midst of doing that, I was an athlete, but also like real bored, right? So in the off season, I'm home running around with my homies and throwing rocks at cars and, <laughs> you know, doing the type of shit that people shouldn't, kids shouldn't be doing. Boys roughhousing type of stuff. And then uh, one summer, mom was like, yo, you can't, you know, you're not going outside. You got to stay in the house. Mm. So while I was in the house, I pretty much tried to cook, tried to play the piano, played all the video games I could. And then, like, she sewed on her off days. So I started sewing. I started cutting my clothes up, putting sleeves on jackets and, like, really Frankenstein. And, like, really playing around with, like, I don't need to be myself. I can be myself, but I don't need to be like anybody else. So mm. that's where the sewing machine came in. It kind of just fell in my lap. Wow. You know? And then... uh over the years, man, like, you know, I just kind of got better at it. I'm making my own shorts and T-shirts. And mom was excited. She didn't have to pay for school to go back to school. And um, she didn't have to pay for clothes to, get you know, go back to school. And then um, over time, I was just like, yo, you know what? I'm an artist at heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love playing sports. I was good. Um, but I was like, you know what? Like, my team was trash. <laughs> right? So I went to Northwestern. Like, we weren't really, we weren't great at all. I mean, I was, like, focused on being good. I went all city. So I did well, but, you know, like, when you don't have the camaraderie of the team doing what they should be doing, like, that doesn't motivate you to go to the next level with people who have that kind of prowess, you know? Mm. So um, I went to art school. I ended up going to Savannah, Georgia. Oh, so you go, did you go to, was it SCAD? I SCAD, yeah. SCAD, okay, yeah. okay. I did not know that. Literally sat in a, sat in a room in the college bound and was like, we're going to go to school. And I was like, right here. Really? <laughs> I didn't even know where Savannah was. So, like, actually, let's, so I like that story your mom was like, "We need you to focus." Yeah, because she was like, "Was she nervous? You might, she might lose you to the streets, being outside." Well, or was it something where she was like, "Let's talk about like what was the reason?" You it think? was a little bit of both, right? So I was always like, I was never the problem child. Like I would do like savage shit, <laughs> but I would never like get caught. But also like living in these neighborhoods, like and you see the other kids like going to jail and stuff like that. A parent is always scared of, like, the narrative, right? Like, I don't want my kid to be a product of this. Mm. So, essentially, I'm, but I was always the type of kid, if you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. So, if she say stay in the house, I'm staying in the house. I was mm. never like, I'm going to sneak out the window. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, and she knew that. So, that kept her solid. Um, that made her feel good about, like, making decisions for me and all that. But when she saw me sewing, she leaned into it. You know, like, she took me to Joann's and bought fabric. Joann's, yeah. She bought me paint. She bought me blank T-shirts. And um, and it's a blessing to this day. I'll never forget having a parent that's like, yo, you know what? I'm behind this. You know what I'm saying? So when I got to, when I decided to go to college and she, you know, she was struggling a bit, um, you know, me going to Savannah was strictly just to make sure that mom wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be a burden to mom having mm. to feed another mouth. Like, I was a 200-pound, 18-year-old kid. Like, I needed to eat. And so I was like, let me go far away so I can, like, figure this out on my own. And I went to Savannah, and they dropped me off in an apartment. And I was an adult. You wow. know what I'm saying? So, um, but in the midst of that, I was trying to be an architect. Okay. Never went to school to be a fashion designer to start out. Okay. Um, I was really into drawing and drafting and stuff like that, which was cool. And... Uh, while I was there, I just couldn't get through physics, man. I could not get through physics, bro. I couldn't get enough girlfriends to do my homework. <laughs> like, I couldn't, like, <laughs> cheat my way through it. And then uh, I was at this house party, and this kid's like, yo, you didn't, go to, you didn't go to the lecture. I don't feel bad. And I was like, well, what lecture? He was like, Spike Lee. <laughs> and I was like, shit, I got to go to that one. Right. I'm the only black kid in the class. Right. I'm on my way. So I got on this bike. I raced to the theater. I sat in the back, and I'm just like kind of, you know, watched a little bit. And only thing I heard him say is like, nobody wants to wake up and say like, "Fuck, I gotta go to work." Mm. The whole lecture is the only thing I heard him say. Mm. The next day, I was a fashion major. Mm. I was like, let me just go do what I'm good at, do what I like to do. And um, at that point, man, I was just like, you know what, this is great. No, it was tough starting out because obviously, like that era was the Dipset era, right? So. Mm -hmm. it was, jerseys and fitteds and right and i was wearing that in school and i would get to class they were like yo you don't belong here you're in the wrong place they did that for at least my freshman wow. and sophomore year wow yeah man it was crazy the south is no joke 
Yeah, bro. So were you the only black kid in your class? Well, there were other black kids, but they weren't like around the way black kids. You know okay, I get like, you. They I understand. Weren't, like, you know, like they didn't have that guff. I got you. You know, um, I got you. They were. It was a private school, right? So a lot, of, like everybody there had like parents. Oh, Millionaires. Yeah, they chill those money. Because I want to give you a shot, first of all, folks. Because if you don't know what SCAD is, you better go g- Google it. Because I know about, the only reason why I knew about because I got friends in the art field. Yeah. And I know how expensive it is to school, go to school yeah. there. And I know it's hard to get in school for there. Sure. And they don't really, sure. and they didn't really let so many people into that school. For sure. So for brother, for you getting in, wow. Yo, my And people need to know that. that. That's something that people need to know just because sure. that's legit, legit. And you know what's wild, Aaron? You're know, like, for years, bro, like, when people ask what college I go to, I never said anything. Like, what? Because I was like, y'all go to SCAD. And they, people be like, what? What is that? Like, I'm like, bro. But when people mention it to me, I'm like, word. Oh. Be outside. Like, that's you know like the I'm Harvard saying? of art. That's it the heart. That's what it is. Bro. It is, man. It is, man. It, that, and, but at that point, like, it was so hard. It was so hard, like, getting through, like, the core courses and finally getting to senior thesis and all of that. Mm. You know, like, in the midst of... Uh, you know, in the midst of being there, like I worked at Ralph Lauren one summer as an intern, and I really struggled with it. Really struggled being in New York. Mm. Like, and I swear that internship was at least three weeks. I think it lasted like two. Really? Yeah, man. Because I couldn't, I couldn't really get with uh, creative corporate culture. Got you. So, creative corporate culture essentially like you're in the fashion industry, and you're not only just in the fashion industry, but you're a straight black man. In the fashion industry. Okay. So there's a whole lot of like, oh, we're going here. Nobody tells you. Or like, you know, undercutting you in the office. Mm. Like people like taking, you know, taking designs. And I'm like, we talk about something in the coffee, in the coffee shop. And then you presented it in a meeting. <laughs> that kind it's of stuff. Cutthroat. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, initially I was like, you know what? This is just like Ricky. This is the rookie qualms, bro. Like, mm-hmm. this is what rookies go through. Deal with it. And then over time, I was like, well, I just don't want to. So I called my mom one day, yo, and I was like, I had a rough day. And she was like, well, just go home. <laughs> and three hours later, like. you back in Baltimore. I was on the doorstep like, yo. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Good. You know what I mean? So at that point, man, I was like, you know, I had to go back to school. I had to finish my senior year. Did you need that to graduate, though? Um, No, not really. So I know some so schools the, make you do an internship yeah, to graduate. No, not a requirement. The good okay. thing about SCAD, the cool thing about SCAD is, um. It is a school. It's a school of design for careers. Okay. So their their mission is to like make sure you have a job mm. in the industry, not like some subpar. Like all the professors were designers. Mm. They work for Bagley and Mishka, and they work for Tom Ford and Gucci, and you know they were really well versed. So when we were learning, we were learning with champions and pros. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So um, I just got a great referral from one of my teachers. Man, like one of my teachers was very fond of me. Um, and then I have some other friends that, that work there and they kind of vouch for me. I love that. Um, and even to this day, I was like, man, I should have stuck it out a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really wasn't what I wanted it to be. You know what I'm saying? So, um, in hindsight, it's, you know, it was a lesson learned, but also like probably everything that I am today. Mm. Like now I'm a, I'm a professional, you know, CEO, I own my own business. You know what I'm saying? And I probably would have never done that. If I hadn't left, right. like, I think I saw something different in me, um, and also was like, "Yo, I'm just not, I'm not willing to accept this." Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, once I got home, man, I had these dead end jobs. Like, I was working in like the water taxi and CVS and everything that wasn't sewing or designing because I just got tired of sewing. I was like, "Y'all need a break." Mm. And I'm in mom's house, yo, banging up wedding, uh, prom dresses and thinking I could sew. Thought I was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Charging people like four or five hundred dollars for dresses, and and I was not banging them out, and they were accepting it. And then uh, one day I was like, you know what? Like I got to get back in the game. So I went to Nordstrom, and was like, yo, I need a job. So where's the, so where's the manager here? Mm. The tailor shop. Walked and got dressed. Walked in there, and Anthony Taylor, he's a uh, probably like father figure, mentor, man, probably the best human being I've met in years um he really coached me through like he coached me through how to get back in this game and to sew and be good at what you do but also really be uh adamant about learning and perfecting the skills so i went in there cocky yo like i can sew i'm nice you man <laughs> i sew circles around these old people 
And um, first thing he asked me, he was like, yo, can you, uh, he said, you live with your mom? I was like, yeah. He was like, all right, cool, because I can't pay you. So I was like, yo, look, just teach me how to sell. I got I got charisma. Right. I can get clients in the bars and, like, you know, I figured that out. And I went there two weeks straight, and I worked for free. From Fellas Point all the way to Towson, on the light rail, on the bus. Mm. And I was up there 8 o'clock in the morning every day. Every single day, bro. And uh, after the second week, he was like, yo, I got to hire you. And at that point, I was like, yo, I can do whatever I want. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a measure of, like, yo... You can do whatever you want, bro. You mm. went ahead and took this from him. Or he you you worked hard enough for him to give you an opportunity. Mm. And you wouldn't take no for an answer. So at that point, man, I was just like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna be a tailor. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be real good at it. And then uh <clears throat> then I just realized it happened again. I was back in that, that mode, like, I don't really wanna do this forever though. Like it's something else. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, I was getting tired of working in Nordstrom and, uh, you know, I wanted to design again. I want to get back in the game. And then I ran into my former business partner, Jason, in a bar, you know, like, and we hit it off immediately, mm. immediately. Like, it was like poetry in motion, man. And um, we had an idea just about going against the grain, you know, like being black men from, from Baltimore and also like going like really, really showing off for the stereotype. It's like, just because I'm a big black man, like, I ain't got to hoop. Love it. I ain't got to play ball. Like, I can be the best designer in the world. Why can't we do that? You know? So, we really, like, set out to make a brand to inspire people to to go against the grain and chase their dreams. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, the con- the conversation of treason is so negative, right? Such mm-hmm. a political no-no. Right. But, like, we really wanted to change the narrative. It's like, if everybody wants to go left and you go right, essentially you're you're committing treason to some extent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we want to make products to assist people in exploring that in the best way they can, you know? Um, and we had such a good time. We had a wonderful time, man. We were invested, Under Armour. Remember, Under Armour. Under Armour. Ha- yeah. yeah, like we did a commercial and then one day he's like, yo, like, they want to sit with us, bro. And like, it was, it was amazing, man. Mm. I look at those pictures to this day, yo. And like, I go back and Kind of reset with it, and it's the best time of our lives. I wouldn't take anything. Back. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I saw some bags. I wasn't around during that time, but I was like, saw some bags. I'm like, damn, yeah, where, where that bag come from? Yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, had, yeah, y'all, 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 y'all had some. I like the story behind it because when I think about when I do my show, mm-hmm. I try to break every mold and stereotype. Yeah, for sure. And the reason why I say it says when you think of podcasts and just the black community. First thing somebody pops up is drink champs. Okay. Yeah. First thing is, but it's always rappers or hip hop. Yeah. And I get it. They're popular. I get it. Right. But the ones that are speaking the truth, a lot of people don't listen to. For sure. And then you got hit a different audience. Right. And I've, it's enabled me to cross over to different audiences. You're killing it, man. And that's what I like what you're saying. You're doing the same thing. Let's break the mold. Yeah. Let's figure out. Let's have an intelligent conversation, sit down, and I just talk about what's going on. Yeah. You know, and I like that you, I like the name of it because you're going one, going right, you're going left. Yeah. And I really like that, how you came out. Appreciate and that, that, man. Um, and, and to be honest, like, you know, I think our makeup, and I, you know, I can't speak for him. I haven't spoken to him in so long, but I know for me, that's changed my life and everything that I am today. Like, I just stay on that same course. Like, mm. if, it, if, if, if everybody's in the same herd, I am going the wrong way because mm. I can't be seen in that herd. Mm, you know what I'm saying facts like that's the thing like if you like the people don't understand man like the more and more you like run with the crowd like you hear this you hear the noise you run with the crowd but you didn't everybody ran but you don't realize that somebody got hurt right. and you ain't pick him up because right. you wanted to run with the crowd right I understand running for safety right but also like let's have clarity about what's going on right let's have like and honestly by the time you run with the crowd and they stop you look around, you're like, damn, man, like, you came a long way, but you went the wrong way. Right. So now you like, damn, I want to go back over there now. But you're too tired to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think me, per- like, personally, th- that entire experience has been, like, liberated me. It was probably some of the best learning experiences of my life. Um, and it actually, like, birthed what is Bushler's today. 
Right. Hold that thought because we're gonna we're gonna talk about yeah. that, <laughs> folks. We'll be right back. Guy, sponsor the guy, pay the bills. We'll be right back because we're gonna talk about his company. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help someone find, interview for, and get hired for a job, and provide follow-up services for success. It can break down educational barriers and give that extra help to a struggling student with in-school support programs. Give today. Spark something bigger. Hi, my name is Katherine Womack. I'm a former strategic intelligence officer with the U.S. Navy. I spent the last couple of years at U.S. Cybercom and transitioned from active duty after 15 years into small business ownership. I own and operate a digital marketing agency in the state of Maryland. So a lot of people approach me thinking that digital marketing is simply social media management or maybe doing Google ads or Facebook ads, things like that. But what digital marketing really is, is an umbrella term for a multitude of tactics to get small businesses found by the people who need them. I personally specialize in search engine optimization, website development with conversion architecture in mind. And what that really means is the people are going to your website and doing the thing you need them to do. And oftentimes it's requesting a quote, an appraisal, things like that. So there's definitely a psychology to website development. And we lean really heavy into the psychology of sales to get people to do the things you need them to do. A lot of times as a business owner, you haven't had the time to think about what your needs really are, what your challenges truly are, the, the sources of those challenges. I can guarantee you in most cases, it's not simply that you need an ads campaign and that's where I can add value to your marketing strategy. I mean, this has been an amazing episode, and this is the part two of it. And I'm so excited, you guys, to hear Mr. Aaron's story. He's taking us through the whole just thing of his life. Me learning from growing up West Baltimore, going to uh, college down in Savannah, Georgia. I mean, then working up in Polo, Ralph Lauren. You know, it's not as sexy as you think it is, but he talks about He talks about, you know, going to work for two weeks straight. Not even getting paid. How many of y'all can do that? And say so y'all will work hard, get that, and then get it hired. So now we're talking about your shop. Yeah. Let's talk about the name. How'd you get your name? Walk us through a little bit. So, um, so. What year and what year was it? So I think it was about 20 to uh, 13, maybe 14. Okay. At that point, like, um, you know, which reason we hit, a, we hit a bunch of hurdles, man. And we was really just taking in too much water. And we really mm -hmm. couldn't get out of it man and it was it was it was really hard it was really hard so at that point it was like yo we need to we gotta pivot <laughs> like we can't sit in it you know what i'm saying um and then for a long time i did the best i could to kind of try to like figure out what it is and revive it and i was like you know what like this is becoming counterproductive mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i need to let this sit for a minute mm -hmm. um you know how like you look at something for too long and then you look at all the imperfections and all this stuff and it gets worse and worse, like just like visually, you know what I'm saying? Like you really can't, you really can't come up with a solution because you've been looking at this thing for so long. So I was like, you know what? Like I realized that like when I get in those modes, I have to go back to what got me here. Mm. And that was a sewing machine. So every time like I get in these depressing modes where I can't 
feel like I can't get over something, man, I can sit at my sewing machine and that thing starts humming and I start sewing and whatever I'm concerned about goes away. Mm. Every single time. Every single time I sit at that sewing machine and I start working, nothing else matters. So that's what I did, man. Like I started sewing again. I had the shop. We actually started treason in that shop. Um, and then while we were doing trees and I was pretty much taking my money and just keeping them rent paid just in case. And, you know, I just always wanted to, maybe we might need it for something else later. Um, I'm like the, a hoarder kind of guy, not like a messy hoarder where I've got a bunch <laughs> of junk, but I'm the guy like if I'm not, I'm like, a, I'm not a, 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 you know, like an Excel spreadsheet kind of guy, but like if important papers are there, Aaron's got it. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Like All right. <laughs> so I felt that way about the shop. Is it in a like, stack? Of, is it in a stack of papers? Uh, it is. Is it everywhere? It's, just... it, no, it's, it's stacks and file cabinets. <laughs> like when I leave here, I'm going to look in a file cabinet and dig through looking for something. But um, that's how I felt about the shop. I was like, I'm gonna keep it just in case. Okay. And then, um, you know, I had clients. Was like, yo, I'm proud of you, man. The streets and stuff is cool, yo. But I still need my tailor. Right. So I was like, you know what? Like, this could be my other. This could be my means to an end. Kind of stopped the bleeding a bit over there and. You know, I was struggling, you know, like I was really having a hard time, like, you know, my girlfriend at the time, like, com you know, like really, really being honest with her about like what's happening because I didn't want to scare her or, mm. um, and also just male ego shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you a lady, like, hey, you hit the ground, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm real big, being real pig headed. Uh, and then it's slowly but surely that shop, man, a little shop on Chase Street, like, gave me another life, you know what I'm saying? Like, Every single day, man, I would paint another wall. I hang another picture. I would add this and add that. And over the last five years, man, that shop has become what it's become today. Mm. So that tailor shop is not just a you know a place of business, but I can I call it the tabernacle, right? Mm. Like it's a place where people can come and they can confess to all of their struggles with fashion and clothing. And to be honest with you, man, that's what people need. Like, people need to feel really good about themselves, but they have no idea how to go about it. So I'm a professional in that regard, mm. right? I'm here to listen to what you need and provide you with something that works. I'm not here to, like, dig in your pockets. Like, the number one thing I always tell my clients, like, look, if you like it, I love it. But I'm not going to let you leave here looking crazy. Because mm. you're going to tell somebody I did that, and I'm not doing that. Right, <laughs> right, You know what I'm right. saying? Um, but also, you're here, it's an institution, I'm here to educate you on how to shop now. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you buy something on sale and it's a few sizes too big, like, yo, you could get it altered. Mm. And then you can have it. Or you have stuff in the closet. Yo, don't buy nothing new. Let's fix all this cool stuff that you already have. You spent all this money on. You know what I'm saying? And if mm. you're not sure what to do from there, yo, I'll come in your crib. Let's go through the closet. Mm. Let's throw this junk out. Let's, let's, let's reset you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's really more of a lifestyle situation man and and slowly but surely we're growing into a you know a clothier but not like you know like the the gentleman's clothier right mm -hmm. like typically you go to these shops and the guys are well dressed and i love it you know like they got the bourbon and the, the <laughs> shoes and the this and then that which is awesome but um i think that one piece of flavor man is like it still has that trees and heartbeat where it come as you are mm. you know what i'm saying like the people that don't work that works in my shop, man, like I'm very stylish, hip people. And it's not really you don't have to be in a suit every day to be fly. You All know right. what I'm saying? Like that's the trees in this way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that's the that's where the left brain comes into play. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um and they're very, very like unconventional ways to still be dressed for the occasion without being overdressed. You know what I mean? So, um, the goal, man, at some point, man, I want there to be a bushless of everything. A bushless of New York. Mm. A bushless of D.C. Bushless bridal shop. You know what I'm saying? I want to take the same little light of mine that I let shine so far. And I wanted to shine in other cities. I wanted to help other people. Um, and then, you know, at that point, man, also I still have other design endeavors. Like when I want to design things outside of that, I can do it under the same umbrella. Um, I just want to be able to be free. You know, like, like I mean, like, where you can wake up, you got an idea, and you can put it to the ground and start running. You know so what I'm saying? when you, you know, you're you're killing the game right now. You're doing yeah. 
Appreciate how that. do you how did you manage COVID? Yeah. First of all, that's a big question because COVID nobody was going out. Oh yeah. So how did you pivot? And it sounds like you do some personal styling a little bit on the side yeah. too. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and like okay. walk us through the COVID. Walk us through the styling just from so, what you're talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, so COVID, man, like, was interesting. Like, because we, um, you know, the minute things kind of, like, came to a bubble and things shut down, we had about, like, 18, exactly 18 clients lined up for wedding season. Mm. And then in two or three days, all of them were canceled. So all of our money and everything we had coming in for the, you know, the height of our season was diminished. So, um... Alicia was still kind of working from home, emailing, trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I was like, what am I supposed to do? The shop is closed. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I I can't work anywhere else, mm -hmm. right? Like, everything else is done. So I went, I went back to what got me here. I went to Joanne's and started looking for fabric. Mm. And tried to start sewing, started sewing, right? Mm. So I'm in Joanne's and this lady's like, she pulls me to the side and she was like, hey. So you make a mask? Oh. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, what you using for straps? I was like, come over here. We're going to use these. Now, mind you, I was not making masks. Right. But she straight sparked something in my brain. And then literally on the way home, I'm texting my wife. And then one of her friends is calling her, calling her like, yo, this is short as your mask. And Erica running this up right now. So before you know it, my wife was using a surgeon. I told her how to use a sewing machine. And we made about, I think we did like 3,000 masks in a couple months. You know, like, I mean, we were putting them in Ziploc bags, tossing them out of the door. Mm. Um, and it was just that small window until the until the supply was met, the demand was met. I mean, at that point, like, there was masks everywhere, right? Like, so um, that was a great bonding moment for my wife and I. You know, we were isolated. We were really, really, like, practicing. Can we work together? You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Um, and it also, like, it's just liberate. It's just fun to see your, your wife, like, sitting there immersed into what you do. Mm. So, at that point, man, like, it was it was wonderful because I, I didn't know what was next, but I also had a, a means of income in the meantime. And we obviously knew it would open up eventually. Um, but after that, then we, you know, all PPP stuff fell in place. And so we were able to, you know, really get help, Good. get help to get us, get us upright. But also it was like, what's going to happen when we come back now? Right. Right. It's like, come back like Jordan wearing a four or five. Right. Like, <laughs> so what the four or five look like? Not, right? too, not too, not too great. Not too great. <laughs> so we just kind of, um, I kind of just stuck to the roots, man. Just like. Allowing people to be themselves and whenever they, they get around to it, we'll be here, we'll be available. Mm. You know, like, so I started this, you know, like, no appointment needed. You don't have to have an appointment. If you come in this door, I got you. Mm. And I ain't saying no to nothing. If you come in here, you need curtains sewn, I'm sewing them. If you got holes in your cushions, I'm sewing them. Mm. If you want to put seat covers in your car, I'm sewing them. Mm. Anything I can run through that sewing machine, I am sewing it. And not, well, not for the need, not for the need just for, for us to benefit, but also just to, like, just exercise other avenues of my skill set, right? Because, like, I can I mean, I can sew 100 pairs of pants, but that doesn't fulfill me, like, mm. mentally. You know what I'm saying? Like, creatively, it doesn't really spark anything. It's just, like, it's repetitive factory work. Mm. So, at that point, man, like, we were back up and rocking and rolling, and then, you know, it segued into the style stuff. You know, it was like, yo, like, what's the other layer of this business? Um, I had a client, well, a friend of mine, he, used to, he came in to do a consultation with another, a friend of his. I don't know if you're familiar with Rich Fresh. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So he uh, came in, one of, you know, the guys that works for, for Rich, did a measurement, did, did a fitting with him, with my boy James. And then the gentleman, Aaron, who was in it, he was like, yo, you don't do custom suits in here? I was like, nah, man, I've been trying to look for a partner for months. He was like, man, I'll call you tomorrow. Three days later, I got a manufacturing partner wow. doing custom suits. Wow. I mean, designing cool stuff mm. all, all the whole night. Um, he ended up leaving, and now he's a stylist for Stevie Wonder in L.A. 
Wow. Right? So wow. All like pretty much all his his Rolodex and all of his clients he was dealing with from here to Virginia. Um, so now we take care of him. Wow. So that really opened up the door to styling. Mm. Like some cats be like, yo, can you come down and look at my closet and get rid of some of this junk? Mm. Like, I don't even know what to do with it. Like, um, and it turned up, man. Like, I to this day, man, like I give that man all the flowers needed. If he calls me now and says, Aaron, I need you to do X, say less. You know, so um Who was the celebrity that you did that came to concert here? Um I'm not I, Kevin Lyles came. So was we did it, Kevin Lyles. It was a female, right? It was I f- did uh oh no, I did Lotto. Lotto, yes. Did Lotto, Lotto. In DC. Yes. Um also How did she find you? Just curious. How the to- So was so honestly the other side, man, like God's God's grace, yo, is crazy. Okay. Cause you know, like obviously having a good heart and all of that and people meet you in passing, having conversations about what you do. Mm-hmm. You, have, you don't know who they are. Like you said, somebody's always watching. Right. So I've done like a couple movie sets. I've worked on Lioness. Okay. I've worked on Lady in the Lake. Um, I worked on Guardians Galaxy. Mm. Like just tailoring stuff on the side. You know, like people don't realize like these movie industry is huge. And then when things don't fit on set, they need somebody on set to like alter it or dye it or put a hole in it or whatever. So I did all that. And then what happens is the agencies... When they come to D.C. or Baltimore, I'm the first person they call, right? Nice. Because I could pivot, right? Like, I'm not, like, a huge corporation, but I could also accommodate without it being, like, this huge headache of a a task. Like, oh, he has to come, and we have to get him a machine and all this other stuff. So that was the excitement for me. So I do Under Armour shoots, Nike shoots, mm. like you name it. So I think because I did all those things before, randomly, somebody's like, oh, he's the guy. He's the guy. You know mm. uh, so John Baptiste, he was here for Secretary of State dinner. Mm. I did alterations for his whole family in a hotel room. Wow. Yeah, man. So those opportunities, man, and just loving the sewing machine and respecting the sewing machine, like it, it's changed my life, you know? Wow. Like it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me to decide to like go with my gut. You know what I mean? So now Bushels of Baltimore is uh we're here to stay, man. Um <laughs> I can't wait to share this little light of mine with the world. Um, we're 11 West Chase Street. You can follow us on Instagram, Bushelers Be More, at Bushelers Be More. Um, and stay tuned. I got a lot of cool stuff ahead of me, man. I really can't wait to really, really get off a lot of this creative aggression on my heart. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, but also, like, I want to make, I just want to make the world look great and feel great. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and, and at some point, I like to be able to influence some other young young bloods, young cats. I love it. And have them come and sew. Like, I got my, so I have a new intern coming on the first. And he's straight out of high school. Mm. And he's nice. He's, like, excited. He reminds me of myself. So eventually, man, I like to get to a point where the people that are working there are not just, like, old seasonal tailors, but some young energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, really teaching people the ropes. The way my boss in Nordstrom taught me. Mm. Um, and I think that's how we keep the industry alive. Like, if you think about it, the tailoring industry is it's dying, man. Yeah. Because the older tailors are, everything they know dies with them in the casket. You know, it's interesting. My dad used to go to these conferences, and it was a national organization of black law enforcement. Yeah. And these brothers would have a guy that flew in from uh, overseas. Yep. Do be they be like dude's only here for the for the conference and he's in a hotel room yes with book swatches and books yes. and all this yes and it's like why can't why can't we do that here right right where we are right like that's crazy to me right and it doesn't have to and the, and the thing is like you can't teach an old dog new tricks but the old dog respects the new tricks mm-hmm. that, that at least they should and when I worked with older tailors man like I've got some of the illest game but also the clothes have been changing. Mm-hmm. over the years so when I was doing new stuff on for alterations they're like that ain't how you do it I'm like yo but this jacket ain't made like the jacket you've been doing right. for the past 50 years right. you know so um, having this new energy man like seeing clothes change the trends are changing wide pants are coming back right you remember we were wearing size 40s and we everybody, was 30, wearing, everybody was wearing everybody wearing big clothes twos, they coming back right? <laughs> so having some young energy around who can really really like help you know guide or nurture that narrative 
will help us figure out how to alter this new stuff coming in too. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not an old old head. Right? You have old but, soul, seems like. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Old I have, soul. Like, I, I got old school values, mm-hmm. new school rules, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's really where I'm at with it. Um, who, who would you say, looking back, if you could look back at your younger self? Yeah. What would you say to your younger self? Um, Job well done, kid. Yeah. Job well done, man. I don't really like, I'm, like I said, I've never really been like hard-headed or a troublemaker, but everything that I've been through, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love you know what that. I'm saying? Like, and, it's, and to be honest with you, like, I can't wait to make new stories and have children and you know what I'm saying? Like, I do this for my unborns and the future of my family and the legacy I can leave here when I close my eyes. Um, and it's something that I want to keep here. If you think about it, like, there's so many so many companies in this world that are huge. The L.L. Beans and the Phil, like, these huge companies. And what they say is, like, oh, my grandfather started this Facts. 100 years ago. Facts. I ain't no black companies doing that. I don't know. There ain't a lot I'm of not... black companies that's a hundred years old. No. And it's still and they millionaires now, right? Right. Like you got like H and S, like they grant they did that years ago. Mm-hmm. We need that too. We need that legacy, man. And that's my goal is like to create the legacy now so that way my grandkids will still love it when it's time for them to have it. Cause that's what happens too. They fall out of love. You know, like, you want them to have it, but the kids is like, man, like... I don't want to do this. Oh, they got flying cars now, bro. Right, right. Like, I ain't trying to sit in those sewing machine. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and it might not look like that way then. It, they might not be sitting in a sewing machine, but just keep the business alive, baby. Like, it's yours. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm off blood, sweat, and tears, man. Like, winning everything that we have thus far. I love that. I and, love that. And I'm excited about where we're going and... You know, I'm excited about what I can do for Baltimore, my city. Um, and instead of leaving, you know, I want to make sure we, I plant a flag here to make sure that my family's good and take care of some other people's families in the process. And, uh, you know, just be the best Aaron I can be for the city that I'm from, man. I like that. So, I mean, you, I mean you've hit on every point. Eve, I asked my, you answered half of my questions, yeah. <laughs> which is great. So I always try to do, I try to do a speed round. People wanted to come back yeah. and bring it back for fifth season. Speed rounds real quick, in and out. Chicken wings, flats or drums? I eat chicken wings, baby. I'm a chick. I eat mm-hmm. flats and drums. Okay, I, all right. I no preference. Honey Old Bay or regular buffalo? Ooh, Honey Old Bay. That buffalo is for the, no, nah, Honey Old Bay. Blue cheese or ranch? Ranch. Okay. Snowballs or ice cream? Snowballs. Egg custard, too, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Is it two or two? Two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? I didn't even realize that was a thing. <laughs> it's a thing, I, was, I guess. And I was like, damn, t- two? two. It's two. Right? Two, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I never thought it was a thing. That's crazy. Crabs or crab cakes? Oh, man. I can't live without either one. But you need one, though. One, you got to pick one. Whew. I gotta keep the crabs, man. I need the I need the hands dirty. <laughs> I need the sweaty lip. I need I need uh I need my finger to cut. I need to find all the cuts in my finger. Oh, you gonna find them quick? Like, <laughs> you gonna find, you gonna find them real quick? Yeah. You gonna find them quick? Yeah. Where can we find you on social media? Where can we find you? I know. Again, tell your address, yeah. the phone number. Yep. Can they slide in the bushes DMs? Or what can they do to so, get a hold of you? So the best way, the best way to communicate with us is Instagram. My wife, um, discover Miss Discover Charm City. Uh, Alicia, she's uh, been running our Instagram. Um, she's the best thing since sliced bread, baby. Not even gonna hold you, but she runs the Instagram. Uh, Instagram is at Bushelers B More B U S H E L E R S B M O R E at Bushelers B More. Feel free to jump in the DM if you got any questions. Let us know. Also, you can send us a direct email, uh, Bushelers of B More at Gmail dot com. Um, my Instagram is at Taylortron. So if you have anything specifically for me, feel free to hit me up. T A I L O R T R O N. Um, yeah, and we're at 11 West Chase Street. The doors are always open for you. We can't wait to see you. The hours, the hours, yeah. hours. So our hours are from Tuesday to Friday from 10 to 5. Um, I'm a, right now, we're actually in the process of staffing again. Um, so sometimes in the past it's been really, really hard cause I'm a one man band. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, 
But 10 to 5, Tuesday through Friday, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2. We're closed on Sundays and Mondays. Um, if you are an appointment kind of person, feel free to book an appointment. If you have no idea where your schedule is taking you, feel free to walk in when you have, whenever you're free. Um, like I said, it's an open-door policy. We don't charge you for appointments. So if you come in and we don't need to do anything, no harm, no foul. We're here to, to make an assessment not to come and charge you for 10 minutes of time mm. um yeah and that's pretty much it man like we can't wait to we can't make to can't wait to help you look and feel your best and um yeah that's pretty much it well thank you for coming on no picks hanging out yeah thanks just for really, having me just, man. this was great just have a vibe you know so we all, again we'll learn a little bit more about what you got going on highlighting people all throughout maryland what they're doing amazing things and for we sure. gotta definitely celebrate what you have going on and we appreciate you Taking time out of your day. I know it's your off day, no, but thanks for coming good. with the Northeast, hanging out for a little bit. And um, yo, you're doing a killer job too, yo. Like your try. flowers are needed, man. Like this is fire, bro. Try. I'm proud of you, man. Like, Appreciate you. Any way we can help, let us know. Well, yeah. you know, you know, I, you know, you know, I was a little jealous when you did a little. Bar, you got to do your own little podcast. But no, we're, we're, I so, wanted to get invited to that, but that's all right, though. No, we're not going to so, talk about that. So, look, look. So, we'll, we'll get into it. Actually, <laughs> that's a different episode. Yeah, that's a different episode. Different, but different it was cool, episode. though. It was cool. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I want to be a part of this vibe. It was a, it was a really cool episode. So, I yeah, wanted yeah, to give yeah. you and your team, the cast, who did it, give y'all flowers. Right, it was really man. cool. Appreciate it was really that, cool. You know. And I like something you said earlier. That Bart, like how you guys are sitting there talk. That's a show. Yeah, man. Just so you know, that's a show. That's it, yo. That's a show. Thread that's a vibe. Thought, baby. Thread for thought, that's yo. A, that's a show. So you sit down, rap about your fly shit, like what you like, what you don't like. When did you fall in love with clothes? Like, that's what we want to do for you. Hey, that's, that's another added thing for you. Yeah, man. All right, folks. Love, peace, and we're out.